Jeffrey's chief market strategist and CNBC contributor David Zervos is standing by with his thoughts in the wake of Powell's comments. He joins me now. David, it's good to see you. Anything else jump out at you? You know, I liked the conversation, Kelly, on the neutral rate being higher. We know that's been a big topic and it's been coming through in the uh, in the SEP. So I think that was a, that was a nice forceful kind of let's not you know expect we're going way down in interest rates. So I think that that helps. Uh, you know, give us the contour of where they're heading, which is nice. Uh, I, I thought it was just a, a pretty, yeah, all in wonderful speech. I mean, I, I like the ending with the family stuff. I like the way he uh, he approached the discussion about uh, the past and saying, look, if I had to do it all over again, there's really not that much we would do different. We'll, we'll kind of look at, did we need to go a little earlier? Did we need to do a little less? Um, QE, but at the end of the day, I think um, it was a it was a victory lap speech and and a deserved victory lap speech, and that's, I think that's how David Rubenstein ended it as well. I, I'm so glad you put it. I was going to ask you this question. You're not going to like it. You're going to say you shake your head, but I can't help myself. Are we going to look back at these remarks, Dave, when if in economic you know storm six or twelve months from now and say, yep, that was the moment they should have been cutting more vigorously, and instead uh, everyone was fairly relaxed and, and declaring to some extent mission accomplished. He did say a hard landing seems like. Uh, not the most likely scenario right now, which is about as close as the Fed would get to saying something like, yeah, we've done the job. I, I, I think there's always a risk of that. And it could come, Kelly, with a shock. And, and those shocks are, you know, things we don't know about, like what happened with the pandemic. Um, but absent that, I think he's got a pretty good case for, for what he said on the hard landing. There's a lot of people who've been calling for that for many, many quarters, even many, many years. You've had a lot of those guests on, and it's been a it's been a pretty tough slog for those bears. And, and I think he's he hasn't really like gutted the bears in a lot of speeches. And I don't really think he gutted them here, but he he just took, I think, the appropriate measured uh, response to that question and said, look, we we kind of given the information we had, we sort of nailed this, guys. And we got a lot of crap during the uh, during the run up in inflation from a lot of very prominent economists who have been very quiet, Kelly. A lot of the guys that really pushed on on the Fed two years ago, telling us that he was the reincarnation of Arthur Burns or that we were going back to the 70s or that this was the worst Fed in modern or even all history. I mean, they just kind of either disappeared or changed their tune significantly. So I, I think it's a job well done. It's not that surprising what he said, and I didn't, it didn't really move markets that much. We had a pretty good, good pop in S&Ps sure. to start today, I think, much more on the idea that Trump's odds are going up and that may be uh, seen as a positive for the equity market, a little bit stronger dollar, a little bit steeper yield curve, yep. all kind of things you would expect on the, the Trump predict odds going up. One more on, on Powell, and then I want to dive into that. But just for, for the kind of market implications, we did see sept for, uh, the rate cut in September. Markets had been almost fully pricing. Go to 100 percent probability now. November is at 100 percent. December, 99. So it looks like a quarter point cut starting in September is now the baked in most likely, you know, sure thing scenario. What does that tell you? And, and should July be a live meeting or not now? I think July is really not a live meeting. I think he tried to push us away from that. I think it could be a soft rhetoric meeting and the market will like that. But the idea that they go in July seems pretty far fetched. I, mean, I know some of our competitors are out there talking about why July is better because it would seem less political. But I find that a completely disingenuous argument, to be honest. I think it's more political to go in July because of the variable and lengthy lags that monetary policy operates with. September would have very, very little impact immediately before the election. That said, I just, I also just don't see the rationale for doing anything political before the November 5th uh, election. Why, why be seen as having any influence whatsoever? I think he did, he made a great set of comments as well on that independence and the Fed desiring not to be seen as engaging in anything political. So there's no real difference between September and November to me. Uh, I, I would lean a little bit more November, but to be honest, I don't think it makes that much difference to the economy. It may make differences in political perception. And I think that's why I would almost favor, you know, the odds of November being higher than September.